Hello friends, science is all around us. In day to day life, we perform so many activities or make observations which have science involved in it. Have we ever realized the scientific principles involved in each of the activities? How is the sugar cane juice turned into white crystalline sugar? Or jaggery is made out of molasses. The wheat is crushed, grounded and then converted into fine wheat flour? Well, this involves some basic principles of science. And science is learning by doing. And you will realize how learning becomes an enjoyable activity. Today, here we are with some of the basic ingredients to see how the substances can get separated. All substances have some basic requirements on the basis of which they are separated. Let's start by performing certain activities. Let me start with rice. This is rice with some stone pieces into it. Now there is a difference in the size of the stone pieces and the rice. How do we separate the stone from the rice? This is done by a simple method of hand picking. Because the size of the stone is different from the size of the grain, very easily you can separate out the stones from the rice. This can also be done with wheat or with pulses. Now here we have the rice without any stone pieces. This method is called as hand picking. Well this is tea. How is tea prepared? We add to water, milk, some tea leaves or sugar. But we hardly can see the milk or the sugar and this is the color of the tea. We need to separate the tea leaves. Here is the tea without any tea leaves. This involves a simple method of sieving. Here is the cheese. Cheese can be separated from the buttermilk by simple process of sieving. Now if I separate this out, what you can see in the sieve is nothing but the cottage cheese. This is how we make cheese at home. This involves a simple method of sieving. I have juice which has got the fibers and the seeds. But do we drink juice like that? No. When we sip juice, it doesn't have fibers. Where has the fibers and the seeds gone? This is also based on the fact of sieving. When you sieve the juice, the fibers and the seeds because they are of bigger size get separated through the sieve and what you see is the clear juice and this is separation of butter from the buttermilk. Now this process of separating out the butter from the buttermilk can be done by churning. When we churn the buttermilk nicely and fast the entire butter which was in the form of cream in the milk can be separated out. Now what is the process? This butter is lighter and this floats on the buttermilk and then we can separate out this buttermilk from the butter. What we have done in the first activity, we have done the method of sieving. The juice is also sieved. The stones were removed by hand picking and the butter was separated from the buttermilk by churning. Basic idea which tells us that how separation of substances takes place. What you see here is apple along with a lemon. Do you require some basic method or some ultra structure machine to separate out the apples from the lemon? Well, the only thing you need is you separate out the lemon and what you get is same type of fruit. This is also called as hand picking. When we buy wheat from the market, we get so many adulterants, so many impurities present in the wheat. And these 
impurities are present as in the case of stones or it could be in the case of wheat husk. This is the same method which is based on hand picking. Also if there is any kind of mud in the wheat you can sieve it. What you get is some kind of husk which has come out from the along with the wheat grain. Again if we want these are small sized wheat grains which if we do not want to put it in our wheat flour it can be separated out. And this is the wheat sample which if you can see has got lot of husk and it also has certain sand pieces which you cannot see. The first thing would be that we will not buy such kind of wheat, but suppose you have got a sack of wheat like that, would you throw the wheat? No. India is not a country where we throw food grains, we need to develop some kind of indigenous method by which the husk can be separated out and very easily we can separate out and this method is called as winnowing. What is winnowing? With the help of you know I am trying to do it like this, now when we take this, this is called as traditional soup in our homes and first thing is we separate out the husk. Now the husk gets separated and if we throw it, if we, if we stand on a, uh, a particular height the wheat grain would fall separately and the husk fall out separately. So, this is what you can see is the husk which is separated out from the wheat grain. This method was also called as the method of winnowing. I have another activity, this activity is based on the basic process of sieving. If I try and take out little sample of the wheat in the sieve, this is the sieve. Now, if I try and sieve this out, what should remain? Now, the sieve is of bigger size. So, what has happened is only some of the bran has remained in the sieve. The rest wheat flour has come out. Now, this bran is normally not used in making chapatis. Now, if I ask you a question, here is a chalk powder. Now, chalk powder is as fine as that of the wheat flour. If suppose we mix these two, can we separate it out? No. This process involves a basic principle of sieving and if you have a finer mesh you will be able to take out the bran. But this chalk powder is of the same, the particle size of chalk powder is same as that of the wheat flour and so if this is mixed it cannot be separated out by the process of sieving. Now let us see what is this, this is water, now can you see the water, this water is become as muddy as it was in pond. How do we separate out the mud from the water first, a strainer then the first thing which would be I will allow the filtration of this large sized particles. What I will do is, I will sieve it through this, now all large size particles have come into the sieve, but still can you see the water is muddy? Yes, the water is brownish or yellowish, this cannot be used for any purpose because mud is heavier particles. So carefully observe at the bottom of this small jug, you can see a thick layer of muddy water nearly clear water into this beaker, but how to separate out the fine particles of the mud? I will make use of the clamp stand, what I require here is a funnel, now this is called as a funnel. If you see this funnel and what is this? This is a filter paper, now this filter paper can be folded easily, we make another fold. Now slowly pour the near clearer water into the filter paper. As you can see water droplets are coming out in another beaker and very soon you will, when you will see the color of the water in the second beaker, it is 
free of any fine particle of mud. And if you compare the two solutions, very easily you can make it out which one is the clearer solution. They were separated out by this process of filtration. And these yellowish spots are nothing but fine muddy particles. This is very easily done. I have, we have used three processes, sedimentation, decantation and filtration. Water may dissolve different substances differently. Now, let us see how. I have a small activity which tells you that if we take cold water and we have salt. Now, here is a kettle which has got some hot water into it where I am mixing salt in the cold water as well as salt in the hot water. Now, the hot water will dissolve the salt at a much faster rate. Okay. So, now this is called as saturated salt solution. So, what is that scientific principle which can help separating out the salt from the water? Now, if we mix sand and salt together in water, how do we separate the two? Well, there is a very simple basic principle of science involved in it. Sand is much heavier. So, allow the sand to settle down. If you remember, this is the same principle of sedimentation. Allow the sand to settle down and decant the water which contains salts. Now, this salty water can be used with the help of the same principle of evaporation and condensation and what you are left with is only salt in the kettle. So, very easily the sand and salt two absolutely different substances when mixed in water can be separated. I will keep some ice into this cold water and let us see how salt gets collected at the base. Now, here you can see the salt has started being collected in the cold water. This was the water where we first added the salt, it got dissolved, then we put ice into it and now the salt have started getting collected at the base. The principle is that after cooling the solid again comes back into its solidified form. So, this was the result. Also make one more observation here. This was the hot water in which I have added salt. If you see it here very clearly it shows that there is some amount of salt at the base of the water which is not getting dissolved. Why? Because this water has become saturated water. And what is saturated water? Saturated means you keep on adding more salt and then the salt will not get dissolved. What is condensation? Condensation is converting of the steam or the water vapor into water droplets. So, now we wanted to separate salt out of the water for which I require boiled water. In fact, the water which has been boiling here you can see is an electric kettle which is on. I have taken some ice because I want to show you two activities together evaporation and condensation. What have I done? I am going to put this plate over the inlet of the boiling water and now slowly and gradually when the water is boiling, the steam is going to be formed and with the ice, the water droplet is going to be formed and the water in the form of drops will get collected on the plate. This water droplets are actually formed from the steam and because ice was kept on the plate containing this, so, slowly and gradually the water droplets condensed and they formed water. This is a process which is called as condensation. So, what is evaporation? Evaporation is the conversion of water into water vapor which was with the help of the steam and then condensation means change of the steam 
again into water droplets, which we have seen when we inverted the metal plate. We will pour some water into the glasses. Water is a universal solvent. It will dissolve everything, but the rate of dissolution would vary. Now, I require salt and sugar, a spoon of salt, which I will be mixing it in hot water and in this hot water, the salt will quickly get dissolved. A spoon full of sugar and I will dissolve in another glass containing water. What have you seen? The salt got dissolved immediately, whereas the sugar is still there at the base. It will get dissolved, but it will take some time to get dissolved. You did understand that in day to day activities, in day to day life, we involve science without even knowing it. Now, I am quite sure that you people will be able to differentiate between evaporation, condensation, sieving, filtration, sedimentation and hand picking. And these are some of the basic principles I'm sure you will remember and because we have done it, we have performed each experiment, it will leave an impression on your mind and throughout your lifetime, you will never forget it. Thank you so much and remember science is by doing and doing is more enjoyable.